Good Monday morning, everybody. Monday has come around the corner again. I could have, uh, I would have been totally all right with it if it would have waited another day, but here we are. Headed into work. I think I'm headed up north today. I'm not too sure. Uh, if the plan is still the same as last week, I've got to load up a pallet in uh, at our yard, which goes up to Arburg and then deliver that, and then load up new freight in Arburg, bring it back. It's trucking though, right? It might change. They're letting me in again. Open sesame. A lot of trucks in the yard today again. It's Monday morning. So a lot of these trucks will be headed out today, I'm sure. Very often the drivers like to be home for the weekend and that's understandable. And with a lot of trucks in the yard comes a lot of trailers. <laughs> Yikes. We've got a little bit of snow on the ground this morning. Not too much, but it's getting there. Yeah, we're right filled up. There's even a trailer parked there in the center against that fence there. Just the guys in the yard will probably put that away once they get in. You can always tell it's either a Friday or a Monday. Everything fills up and gets really busy. <laughs> All right, let's go start up our old truck. Let's get her going, get her warmed up, get her ready for the day. Like usual, I'm way out here in the back corner. It's where I like to be, nice and quiet, peaceful. Away from all the ruckus of the rest of the yard. This is our tire shop where all the tire stuff gets done. Oh, she's got a little bit of frost on her. Oh, she looks cold. I wish I could bring her inside for the nights, you know? So if you're new here, welcome. We're about to go out, get our trailer hooked up. I think I need a flat roll tight. Then I gotta figure out which pallet I'm supposed to load on there that's supposed to go up north with me. Got my late morning coffee with me, air freshener, because you want the truck to smell good. Phone, because you like to communicate with people. And keys, because you like to open stuff. All right, so I get these. Oh lights to work here. Oh, so the truck is nice and warmed up. Nice and toasty in here. It's going to be a good day. Can you feel it? Bring that up there. Okay. Let's get at it. Let's get something done today. are all working. Slowly back ourselves out of here. Since it gets colder at night, uh, I've been plugging this truck in so that the block heater's on. So that's another thing we've got to remember in the morning is make sure you unplug your truck. Otherwise you're going to pull the cord with you. And then I have to explain to people why you need a new cord. All right, so I'm taking one of these trailers. We have a step roll tight here and we have a flat roll tight right beside it. I can't quite remember if I was told to take a step or a flat when they told me about this load on Friday. I'm just gonna see, make sure these are both empty. And I shot them a message just to confirm which trailer they want me to take. I'm pretty sure he said flat. But uh, eh, nonetheless, we'll figure out and uh, figure it out in a few minutes. One of these two. All right, so the step is loaded. It's a little confusing sometimes because our loaded lineup is behind you guys over there, and then we have our empty lineup. And this lineup along the back could either be empty or loaded. It's both, so you got to check each trailer individually. The flat is empty. The step is loaded. So this is 547R. I'm pretty sure this is the trailer I'm gonna be taking because I don't see any other roll tights here. This is the only empty one we have. All right, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be taking this one. I'm just gonna do a quick putz around the yard here, make sure I'm not missing one. Might be another one here somewhere. And then I'm gonna go into the office, see who's in already, and uh, just double check 
I was supposed to take something north with me to drop off before I pick up. Not sure what's going on. It's Monday morning. I gotta find someone who does know what's going on. And I'm not seeing any other roll tights. Oh wait, wait, there's one over here. Oh, I see one more here. I think this is another flat though. Right here. What is this? 605. Ah, but this one's got a red tag on it, so I can't take it. It says dolly legs on it. I guess the dollies need to be fixed. I think I know what they're talking about too. The uh, the gearing system in there. Uh, the high gear is broken, or just the low gear. So it takes forever to roll up the dollies. I guess the shop hasn't had, had a chance to take a look at it yet. It's been red tagged here for a few days, so I'm guessing they'll probably get a look at it soon. Can't take that one. That was the only other roll tight in the yard. Okay, so 547R it is. It's the only empty one. I have to have a roll tight. ourselves up to the front talk to the very nice office staff and see if we can find someone who knows what I'm supposed to be what I'm supposed to be doing for sure before I hook up onto anything and then have to unhook and waste time dispatch got a hold of me before I could get a hold of them I like it I didn't even have to go halfway across the yard they called me up and uh, knew exactly what I was needing <laughs> I guess we just connect on like uh, what do you call that? Uh, we can tell tell telepathic. We're a telepathic company now. Dispatch just thinks what you're uh, told, and it just gets shot right over there. Wouldn't that be cool? Way faster than instant messaging. Even it's like, hey, what's my load? You can just send them the message through your brain waves, and they send you the information you need right back, and you just we're getting there one day. It's a scary future, isn't it? That would be scary. But anyway, he, uh, dispatch called me up, told me what I needed. Uh, I need to go see one of the yard guys. They know which skid I'm supposed to take. I'm going to let them know that I'm looking for it. They're going to go fish it out or wherever it is. I'm going to go hook on to 547R. They're going to load me up with that. And then we're going to start trucking north. It's going to be a good trucking day. I'm going to go figure out where this yard guy is now. See if I can telepathically summon him too. Is it working? I probably just look like I have to fart. We'll see if it worked. See if he comes running around the corner. You call. Can you see through the window? Can you see? I'm gonna hook up to this trailer now. We're at a bit of an angle, but we're gonna. There you go. Hard. Cut it hard. There you go. There you go. Oh, someone dropped it pretty high. Thanks. Whoop. There we go, flopped in. That's why the uh, fifth wheel has that opening like this, so if you're a little off center, it'll just grab the pin and just suck it into the center. Off we go. It was just a skid of boxes. It's going to the same place that I'm uh, picking up. So they'll unload that there first and then load me up with Apparently 29 feet of freight. And then I'll bring it back here. So Arborg is two hours north of here. Those of you who have been watching for a little while, you're uh, familiar with this route of mine. I go there quite often. It's a nice drive north. It sort of goes right to the edge of uh, civilization in southern Manitoba. There are more people living up in northern Manitoba. Oh, that guy's coming. Let's go, 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 go. And that guy's in the right lane, so we will go in the left lane, put on our don't hit me signals. Wait for him to pass, and then I'll slip back into the right lane there. speed as fast as I can so I don't inconvenience too many people you all know how in 
how people like to be inconvenienced in the morning, especially on a Monday morning. How dare I turn in front of you? Surprised I didn't get the bird for that one. Even though I didn't even come close to cutting them off. And I had my hazards on, you know. People don't like to have to change lanes to go around you. It's very inconvenient for a lot of people. I understand, you know, moving your hand from here to here is very difficult on Monday morning, so I completely understand. I'm just joking around a little bit, it's actually not that bad. People are nice for the most part, but it seems to me on their commute in on the mornings, like I've talked about it before, people are a little more edgy, a little more in a rush, a little less patient. Maybe that's just human nature, I don't know, but I do notice it. Just during the commuting hour, but for the most, everybody else, everybody's mostly a good person, you know, you gotta think, think the best of people and hope for the best. I'm not really a morning person either, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm slowly turning into a morning person because I start earlier now. So I sort of like being awake when the sun comes up like this right now, seeing the sunrise every morning. That's my favorite part of the day now because you have the whole day to look forward to the whole day ahead of you yet. I find that better than the sunset, which means the day is ending. that this trailer doesn't have a door in the in the front of the trailer right that you can get into the trailer it's not that big a deal but you realize how handy that door is to have when you're loading the trailer to get up on the deck you got to climb up the back and you got to open up the back to be able to climb in there so you can't just walk in the door so I don't know why this one doesn't have it I think we got two trailers that don't have a door in the front I think might be just this one. This trailer is a 547R. For some reason or another, this one was not worthy of a front door. So we got everything all loaded up there. And it took 29 feet of trailer space, just like they had predicted. So this is a 50 foot trailer, I believe. So we got a little bit of space in the back of the trailer yet. I'm not too sure if they have any plans for it or what this freight is going down to Florida though one of these days I'm gonna hop on one of those loads going south but I'd like to go to the southwest of the US a couple of weekends ago I had a chance to go down to Colorado to cover a load that needed a driver it turned out that uh, they didn't need me after all but I, I almost had a, a chance to go down there out of it but I want to see the southwest of the US again it's, that's my favorite region. One of, I shouldn't say my favorite, but it's. I really like the, the Western United States. Maybe because I'm a Western Canadian. I like 
like the wide open plains, the long straight highways, the cowboy culture. <laughs> I don't know. Now we're heading back to the yard with this freight though. We've uh, got to get it there so the driver who's taking it can start moseying on down to Florida. It was actually snowing on my on my way north. I don't know if you caught that in the video there or not. That's why my windows and side of my trucks are a little bit dirtier. Because with the snow comes a lot of dirt. It can never just be clean. As soon as it snows, it's got to be dirty. when they designed it. It's a terrible, terrible corner. You guys have seen this before in my videos. So I gotta turn right to turn left, right? You'd think it would go over or whatnot. No, 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 no. This is a very busy four lane divided highway that we're turning onto and I wanna go that way. So you turn right and let me know if this makes sense to you. You see 59 South, gotta turn left. Okay. So we gotta cross over the busy highway to go south. For the majority of you, I've already explained this to you, but I'm just doing this for the benefit of people who are new here now. And this wouldn't be so bad, but it is a pretty busy road. You can't see traffic coming from that way because there's a bridge. So by the time you see it, it's too late. Can't see traffic coming from that way because there's a curve. By the time you see it, uh, it's pretty much too late. So a lot of the time, you just gotta send it and hope for the best. I'm joking, obviously. You wanna do this as safely as possible, but uh, you see now I can't go because there's traffic coming from there. And they're on this road. The tricky part is you don't know, always know clearly if they're on this road here where these pickups are, or if they're on the exit lane, which takes them onto the perimeter highway westbound. Okay, now we're clear here after this black vehicle. And we have a car coming here, but we're gonna send it, like I said. Slowly around the corner, because you want to go easy on your freight in the trailer. Put your hazards on so people don't slam into the back of you. Though there is nobody coming behind us, so that's good. I'm gonna get into the right lane as soon as I can, safely. Keep my hazards on till I'm up and over the hill up to at least 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles an hour. I feel like they're 
is so much I, I feel like there's like a, a much better way that that could have been designed turn my hazards off now we're up to 80 but I always love hearing your guys opinions in the comment section about that intersection is that an intersection that you can relate to is there one like that in the city where you're from it's one thing I miss about driving in the US their highway systems make sense for the most part if you're driving down a highway like this, there's an exit ramp up the side to a stoplight or a stop sign, and then you turn left or right, or you can go straight over and merge back onto the highway. To me, that makes so much more sense. The whole point of an overpass is so that you don't have to cross over lanes of traffic, right? I feel like there was a missed opportunity when that one was being designed, but eh, it was designed when uh, this road was uh, a lot less busy. But this Highway 59 South has really picked up a lot of traffic because of the towns down here that are growing so fast with city people trying to get out of the city. But they don't want to go too far, so they'll move to towns like Grand Point, Ile de Chaine, Niverville, even St. Pierre all the way down there, further down south. And all of those people have to commute up and down this highway then every day. So there's hundreds more vehicles on this road every day than there was five years ago or ten years ago and they're trying to keep up with it this used to be a two-lane highway here and it would go down straight ahead there and cut through the bush that way it was a two-lane so they built this four-lane divided highway while I was in high school I remember that because it took them ten years to complete it and we had a field trip to the Manitoba legislature once and I actually got to talk to the uh, or our whole class, we had a sit down talk with the M MLA for this area right here. And we were able to ask them questions in front of the whole class and in front of like all their colleagues and stuff. And they called on me. <laughs> so I got to ask this MLA in front of everybody, all of his colleagues and all of my classmates, why it took 10 years to get this highway done. And he started sweating and stammering and stuttering. But his best answer was, that they ran out of money. So my follow-up question was, why did you start a project that you didn't have the money to finish? And he didn't have an answer for me. And I think I embarrassed him a little bit. But you know what? I think that's okay. Because why should it take 10 years to complete 10 kilometers or like six miles of highway? Right, I was upset. I drive this highway every day. When I was in high school, I'd drive this highway to go to school and back because I went to a, a school in Winnipeg. I don't know. I, I, I put them on the spot with a real question. They weren't expecting real questions from some bunch of high school students. <laughs> I've always been big into highways and transportation. I've always wanted to be a truck driver. So here I am. So I was always interested in infrastructure and highways. I had a good question. I, I, I thought it was a good question. Why is it taking you 10 years? And why'd you start a project that you didn't have the money to finish? Huh? Why are you always going over budget? Huh? Nothing? No answers? Gotcha. I learned very early that government doesn't have answers. <laughs> They're just winging it. Flying by the seat of their pants. <laughs> okay, so I got back to the yard here. And for the rest of that trailer space, looks like we're going to put a big F-250 in there. It's also going down to Florida. I guess the snowbirds are beginning their migration down there and they want to take their trucks with them. Or their cars. We have a lot of vehicles that we're shipping right now down to the to like Florida, Phoenix, California. Anyone with a, a house down south is headed down there to avoid winter right now. So they want to have their vehicles there with them, right? But they don't necessarily want to drive them down. That's where we come in. I'm just backed up to our outside dock here right now. Or we can drive it right up. Then again, we might not be able to fit it in here. <laughs> this trailer is smaller than our other trailers. It's shorter. Even with the tailgate up, it might not fit in now. It's not going to fit. Not gonna fit, they're backing it off. Shoot! Shoot! 
shoot i thought for sure we'd fit it in there but those pickups are huge like when when they asked me like hey is there room for a pickup on the back of the trailer i was like oh sure looks like it i forgot that the pickup trucks in you know 2021 are bigger than tanks <laughs> it's like it's like a 30 foot truck that's i don't think it's actually that long how long did i say it was 20 anyway that was a, that was a f-250 super duty uh, it's a pretty big truck it's going to go on a different trailer it's a little bit more of a comfortable ride for you you don't want to squeeze them in too tight uh you don't want to risk damaging anything you want to give them you know space to breathe sort of you don't want them to move but you just don't you, you don't want to put them up too close you know because the suspension and whatnot the vehicle still wiggles a little bit right you got to be careful and stuff didn't work out they're gonna put it on a different trailer i'm gonna go park this trailer in the loaded lineup and uh we'll see what they have for me next First, I have to roll down the tarps in the back, close the doors. I don't have any barn doors to swing, but I have to roll down the, the flap. Just pull forward just a touch. See, when you look at this here, it looks like you could fit a pickup truck easily in here, right? Huh? No. Three feet short. They make some big trucks nowadays. Tell me what you think of this. One of the vehicles we got in here. It's not a Jeep. It's a Mahindra. What? What? It's got a rear view mirror and everything. So is this like a on the highway vehicle? It says Rocks, Roxer Off-Road, Mahindra Roxer. That's what this is, a Roxer, Off-Road. I have never heard of this before. Diesel only, so it's a diesel. I mean, it looks like a Jeep, right? You'd think it was a Jeep. I wonder if Dodge Jeep knows about this. <laughs> I wonder if they had a hand in this, or look at this. All kinds of interesting vehicles come through here. You got the mirrors up here that fold in or out. Interesting, yeah. Oh, there's 99 out of 100. There's only 100 of these made. Huh. That's interesting. Not sure where that's going or where it came from, but we're shipping it out. Oh, and a weasel. You guys miss me? Did you miss me? I'm already all showered up. Got my PJs on. Getting ready for some supper. So I don't know what that Jeep was all. Well, it's not a Jeep. It was a Mahindra. Looked just like a Jeep, though, didn't it? What's going on over here? I was vlogging over there. Mickey Mouse has a British accent when he tells scary stories. I don't know why. Oh, he does. <laughs> They're just your typical 30-year-olds watching cartoons on a Monday night. They bring us joy. What do you want? 